Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship. Uh, my name is Keith uh, Reed. I'm the pastor at this church, Memorial Presbyterian Church of Winona, New Jersey. And we welcome all those that are watching online, as well as all of those who are here with us physically. This has been a crazy year, and we have done our best to try to figure out how to um, worship live and at the same time be safe. Um, session just voted last week because the number of uh, hospitalizations in the area um, and even the deaths, at least up in Camden, starting to increase. We're looking at, there's a, um, a, a letter code. Uh, we are currently in orange. If we move into red, we will only be doing worship remotely. Um, I just found out uh, a local church in the Pittman area had a guest preacher on Sunday, and he ended up contracting COVID while he was at church, and he is in very poor health at this moment. So I am wanting to make sure that all of us are safe as well. I think uh, the church where he was at, uh, they had um, social distancing and masks more optional than we do, and I think that's why we have continued to be safe this whole time. Um, are there any announcements at this time? Woohoo, it's good to see uh, the Meg clan here, the Cornellis and Dad. Um, at this time, we will be um, having the prelude be played by um, Anna Maria Pasty. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come at a time of Advent where we are waiting and expecting. And this year, more than ever, we truly wait and expect. Allow for us to trust you in the midst of all that is happening, that you are real and alive and moving in our world and in our lives. Allow this moment of time for all of us, whether we are here live or whether we are online, allow for this time to be refreshment for us, a time where we can set our gaze onto you and truly put our trust and hope in the God of the universe. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And at this time, we'll be having the lighting of the Advent candle with the Holdsworth family. There's a mic right down there. And oh, actually, I forgot the new members part. Can you mind sitting just right there? And we are actually are having a welcoming of new members. And at this time, I would ask for those who are going to, I think the Macaulay family is here. I don't know if I see anybody else. Um, how about this, would you guys, oh good, thank you. Uh, Phyllis is here as well. 
can, um, in order to just keep the airflow kind of staying in the same area, would you mind standing? Um, if everybody could turn, I know it's a hard, the pews are not really set to turn backwards, but if you could go back and look at people in masks, which you will very, <laughs> the joy of becoming new members in COVID. <laughs> Notice their glasses. <laughs> um, these folks have been coming to the church for a while now, and uh, over the next couple of weeks, we are going to continue to have uh, classes for the new members to help them understand uh, who we are as a church and what faith means to both them and to all of us. And so I am so grateful that you are with us. We have... Um, uh, Phyllis Stewart, uh, Ron McCauley, and Ellie McCauley. And there's another family who was not able to be here today, and we will welcome them when they come. Uh, let's give them a warm welcome. And you may be seated, and at this time I will offer a prayer. Gracious God, we give thanks that the life of a church is constantly moving forward. And we give thanks for all of the folks who have been here for years and years, for the folks that just joined recently, and the ones that have just joined today. We ask, Lord, that you allow for us to feel your spirit moving in us in a way that connects us to one another, whether we have been here for years or we are just showing up for the first time. And allow for your spirit to rest upon our new members so that they would have a sense of how they not only receive the kindness and the comfort of this community, but also uh, receive a calling to move into the world to serve you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And at this time, it's the lighting of the Advent candle. Uh, please join us in the reading of Luke 1, 26, 49 as the part of many. In this season of gift buying, it is easy to confuse possessions with happiness. Sometimes we choose the material when we need the mystery of the spiritual. Sometimes we hesitate to really feel it. We're bound up in other worries. We could all use some joy. Our souls crave a sign from God. But the signs we receive are seldom supernatural. Instead, a sign from God may be a smile from a stranger a card from an old friend. Get ready for good news of great joy. Let us celebrate God's goodness. When the angel came to Mary, he said, Rejoice, favored one, the Lord is with you. As we prepare for the birth of Christ anew, our loving God promises everlasting joy.
Please join me as, oh, I'm sorry. Or maybe please join me <laughs> in the prayer of confession. Dear God, sometimes we forget that your Holy Spirit lives inside of us and reminds us to listen to others and to be kind to people, even when we don't like them. Forgive us. Sometimes we get sad and afraid. We forget that you promised to stay with us and help us. Forgive us. Thank you for never giving up on us. Thank you for always loving us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Brothers and sisters, hear the good news. In the midst of a world where we struggle and strife and where it is hard to follow the way, God says, I love you. As often as we uh, come to God asking for forgiveness in Christ, know that through Christ Jesus, our sins are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Betsy Cody, Ellie McCauley, and Gwen Holsworth, please come forward at this time. Representing the one, oops, wait. Hold on. Okay. Um, so at, please come forward and um, socially distance yourself, staying about six feet apart. Um. Excellent. Representing the one Holy Catholic and Ap Apostolic Church, the session of Memorial Presbyterian Church now ordains Betsy Cody, Ellie McCauley to the office of deacon. We also ordain Gwen Holdsworth to the office of elder to active service on session. Welcome. Um, you have heard the call, which was actually a phone call from a member of nominating, most likely, asking if you would be willing to join uh, being a deacon and being an elder. And uh, it's important that we understand that um, the call to these services is not just volunteering, but there is a sense that uh, even though it was a person making a call and you saying yes, God is somehow in the midst of that. There is something unique about what we have set ourselves to be doing while we are a part of this church. And so I have a few questions for you. And they are all I do's and I will's. Do you trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be by the Holy Spirit holy, the unique authoritative witness of Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you? Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of our faith as expressed in the book of order, the idea that scripture is primary and that we are meant to believe and follow and that you will be led by this church as you lead the people of God. Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? 
And will you seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? Specifically to the two of you as deacons. Um, so Betsy and Ellie, will you be faithful deacons, teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people's help to the friendless and those in need? In your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? And now to Gwen. Will you be a faithful elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in the government and discipline, serving in governing bodies in the church? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Do we, the members of the church, accept Betsy Cody and Ellie McCauley as deacons and accept Gwen Holdsworth as an elder, chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? If so, respond, we do. We do. Do we agree to encourage, to respect their decisions, and to follow as they guide us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church? We do. Excellent. Uh, please turn around. And again, uh, we have a, a glimpse of their faces. Uh, these folks um, have been around. Uh, Gwen has been around for a number of years, almost as long as I've been here, I think. And um, Betsy, you've been here for about four or three years? Yeah. And as we saw Ellie, she was uh, becoming a new member today. So uh, while she is a uh, new to us as far as a member she's been attending for over a year and um, she was a part of a reformed church before which is very similar to the presbyterian church in governance so at this time let us give a warm applause and welcome to our newest elders and deacons and i will say a quick prayer let us pray gracious god you call us not just to enter a church and to believe in you and to hear the word of God and to sing the songs, but you call us to serve, to live for one another because Christ lived for us. And we pray that you would touch the hearts of each of these new folks who are, will be elders and deacons, allow for them to know that you are with them. Give them a pause to discern what is going on, not just with a personal opinion, but truly seeking the will of God in all decisions. And we pray that you give them an excitement and a joy for living faithfully to you as they work in committees. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. God's blessings. At this time, we're going to have a reading. It's Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 56. This is known in kind of high churches as the Annunciation. Uh, this is when the angel of God announces uh, that Mary is bearing Christ Jesus. And so, um, since it's a longer passage, I thought we would divide it up by me reading all the non-Mary parts. And Jesse is now Mother Mary. No tall order. <laughs> Hear now the word of the Lord as it comes from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 56. When Elizabeth was six months pregnant, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city in Galilee, to a virgin who was engaged to be married named Joseph, to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David's house. The virgin's name was Mary. When the angel came to her, he said, Rejoice, favored one, the Lord is with you. She was confused by these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. The angel said, Do not be afraid, Mary. God is honoring you. Look, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David his father. He will rule over Jacob's house forever and there will be no end to his kingdom. And then Mary said to the angel, How will this happen, since I don't have a husband? The angel replied, 
The Holy Spirit will come over you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the one who is to be born will be holy. He will be called God's son. Look, even in her old age, your relative Elizabeth is pregnant, and she will have a baby boy. This woman, who was labeled unable to get pregnant, is now six months pregnant. Nothing is impossible to God. And then Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. Let it be with me, just as you have said. And then the angel left her. Mary got up and hurried to a city in the Judean highlands. She entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. With a loud voice, she blurted out, God has blessed you above all women, and he has blessed the child you carry. Why do you have this honor that the mother of my why do I have this honor that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. Happy is she who believed that the Lord would fulfill the promises that he made to her. And Mary said, With all my heart I glorify the Lord. In the depths of who I am, I rejoice in God my Savior. He has looked with favor on the low status of his servant. Look, from now on, everyone will consider me highly favored, because the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. He shows mercy to everyone, from one generation to the next, who honors him as God. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered those with arrogant thoughts and proud inclinations. He has pulled the powerful down from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty-handed. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, remembering his mercy, just as he promised to our ancestors, to Abraham and to Abraham's descendants forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then returned to her home. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, we seek your spirit. We seek your spirit when we come to worship. We seek your spirit alone as we pray in our own rooms. We ask that the words that we hear today and the message upon our hearts would be acceptable to you. Amen. So on Tuesday, we have a Bible study, and they get the scripture that we're reading for worship the following week as the study. And one of the questions that was asked was, um, why was Mary chosen? 
what did she do that was so amazing and so special and so unique that out of all of the women that were Jewish that she would be the one that was picked by God? And the answer is that she believed that God was faithful. Hopefully all of us believe that God is faithful. And there was far more than one girl named Mary who was faithful in the time when she was to conceive. It turns out that God doesn't have these incredibly high expectations for us to achieve before love is given to us, before kindness is given to us, before grace is given to us. The very word grace means that there is a love bestowed upon us without any need for us to have done anything. Mary believed, and that was it. And God said, out of everybody, I choose you, and it will be a gift not just to you, but to the world. Mary was quiet, and she lived out in the hill country, and she should not have been all that important. Um, there were some nice wealthy people living in Jerusalem whose daughters probably knew the books of Moses way better than she did. But that didn't matter to God. And I think God chose on purpose somebody who was away from the big city where the money was and where the studies were. She was up in this mountain land where people were more simple. And it was a way that God said, I care about everybody, not just the ones the world deems as special. We are all meant to be seen by God as beloved because we have faith. Oftentimes when I hear this, I think that Mary is being talked to just individually as a person and that we too in our own faith are meant to be individual relationships with God and that is again not what is happening this isn't just a blessing for her it's a blessing for the nation it's not just a blessing for the nation it's a blessing for all of humanity throughout all time and the experience of having the angel before her humbled her um, in the candle lighting section of today we talked a little bit about joy and we also talked about um, how it is that we um, are a part of God's plan and a part of God's plan is doing what just happened today people become members of a church and over and over again I want to have a physical angel show up right in front of my face and say, Keith, I am an angel from God and I will give you the word of God so that you may go and tell everybody else. And so basically I would just be a dictaphone recording whatever the angel said so I could say it to you. That would make my job a lot easier. I would know how to prioritize things a bit better if God had an angel saying, Keith, this is number one priority today, and I don't care if there's somebody else in the church that has a higher priority, because I'm God, so just listen to me. But that's not how it works. It's not how it works for your pastor, and it's not how it works for you. We wrestle, and we struggle, and there's one person's point of view and another, and in Scripture it may say, one day we're supposed to be patient, and and not be quick to act. And the, the next scripture we read, it says, respond now and follow the Lord today. There is a process of discernment that has to take place. And it is not easy. Again, I think that the way that we listen to God speaking to us isn't with an angel like Mary got. It's by listening to both our hearts and listening to the people around us, especially the people who have faith. We come to this church not just so you can hear me preach. We come to this church so you can see each other and talk to one another and hear one another. What motivates you? What concerns you? And the more that we listen, 
the more that we probably get a sense of how God is moving in the world. It's clear that Mary has the baby Jesus in sight. But we are told over and over again that we have the Holy Spirit inside us. And there's a guy by the name of the Apostle Paul who says, the Spirit of Christ is the same as the Holy Spirit. So in essence, Christ is in our hearts when we believe, and even sometimes when we don't, but because we have taken the call, we hold on. Um, so you will not hear the voice of actual angels. If you do, give me a call. I would like to hear exactly what happened. Um, but what you will get is a phone call from somebody. Uh, you will get an email or a text message. You will look upon somebody who seems to be having a hard time and something in your gut will say, I'm gonna show this person kindness. Uh, a friend of mine who's a pastor, Jim, he works in the Baltimore area. He had just this week somebody knock on his door. Um, he was at the church. Uh, he, he shows up an hour or two a week at the church in order to take care of some business. And a knock at the door, he goes, and it's a man who looks concerned. And he's like, could you help me? Well, uh, Jim knows enough about how many people knock on doors of churches asking for help. And he says, what exactly do you want? And the man, like, froze, didn't really have it all prepared by the looks of it. And he's like, hmm, I could use some gas money. And so Jim says, well, if, if, his, if his steeple was right off the interstate, it would make sense that he would want gas money. He had worked a while back in um, Montana, and his, his church was the biggest on the freeway, off the freeway, and he would regularly get people asking for gas money. So why does this person need gas? And he looks out to the car that's behind him, and he sees that the car has um, a pillow in the back, and it looks like it's cluttered with things. And Jim says, are you living in your car? And he says, yes. And I need money for gas so that I can turn the engine on a couple of times in the night to keep warm. Um, Jim's wife is a social worker. And she knows just how many times people try to dupe and trick nice people. And so when he went home, she said, what did you ask him? Well, I asked him what he needed money for. Well, what else? And she had a litany, like two pages long, of all these questions that should be asked to determine, is this guy really in need of that money or not? Um, he's usually pretty skeptical, he said. But something in his heart said, this guy seems real to me. So he pulled out $20 of his own cash. The church doesn't offer money um, for walk-in emergencies like that. And he went to the food pantry and grabbed a bunch of food items. The man was very grateful. There was a, kind of a, a used blanket that he didn't think the church would miss, and so he handed him the used blanket as well. The man, as he left, his eyes sparkled, and he was very grateful, and he said, thank you, thank you, thank you. And Jim had this feeling in his heart that he did the right thing. He had this feeling in his heart that it was important to be kind and giving to this person. And when I hear the word joy, it's usually much more celebratory than that. But I think that the word joy comes to mind for me as well, because he gave from his heart, and he had a smile on his face when he was done, and the gentleman who walked away had a smile on his face. And it was deeper than just being a pat on the back, look, I'm a nice guy. Jim truly believed that he was a part of God working in the world when he did that. We need to understand that when we do acts of kindness, it's more than us. It's God in us. 
Mary says this. Um, it starts out with Mary focused pretty much on herself um, because she's just been blessed. And she says, with all my heart, I glorify God in the depths of who I am. I rejoice in God, my Savior. And talked about how he has lifted her. But it moves from her and then says, God is amazing. And then it doesn't just end with God is amazing, but it says, this is why God is amazing. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered those with arrogant thoughts and proud inclinations. He has pulled the powerful down from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty-handed. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel. It's easy to have words like that be read off the page and then kind of just go away from the mind, but... The God that we worship, when God says there is good news for this world, it is not just good news in a touchy-feely way. It's a good news that says people who are poor will receive. People who are hungry will eat. People who are sick will get medical attention. And a part of what churches have always done throughout history is not just attend to the spiritual needs of people, but also attend to the physical needs. Because it starts as early as Mary, when Christianity is not yet even born, hearing about the baby Jesus and saying, he's coming, not just for a personal relationship, which is important, but to guide all of us who believe to make a physical difference in the lives of those in need. Throughout this week and few days, hold on to just some of the skepticism, but also hold on to the idea that there are people out there who actually need, need something not just randomly, but from you. And it might be the safest to find which charities that you trust and give to them. It might be that you would like to give more to this church in particular, or to the deacons, or to our food pantry. But think about how you can make an impact on the physical needs of others. At this time, uh, we will be hearing another hymn. This time, are there any joys or concerns that people would like to share? Yes. Uh, we're celebrating Shirley's birthday. Yay! <laughs> Happy birthday, Shirley! I'm glad you're able to be here today. Other joys or concerns? Um, I heard um, about a friend of mine, her father is a retired pastor and he went to a local church here in the area to preach. Um, he'd actually turned them down a couple of times. Um, I talked about it a little bit earlier. Um, his name is Don. 
please keep him in your prayers. He is in Inspira. He is not doing well. Uh, he actually was planning his funeral arrangements with his daughter on the phone because with COVID, you cannot physically go into the hospital anymore. Um, and it breaks the heart of his daughter because um, he spent his whole life visiting people who were sick in hospitals. And now she can't even do the same for her father. Um, and she told me, Keith, uh, make decisions on the side of caution when it comes to worship. And so that's a part of why we, as a session, made the decision to, if we do hit red in the county, that we will not be worshiping live. I'm very grateful for all of you to be here that are, and I'm very grateful for all of you online who tune in week in and week out. I appreciate your faithfulness to God, to yourself, and to the community. At this time, let us pray. God, we give thanks. We give thanks that there are people who feel called by you to serve. Give thanks for all those leaders of this church throughout history who have given time, energy, and money not just to a building and not just to a club, but to the living, faithful community of Christ. And we give thanks for the people who have said yes to becoming members today. We ask that you would uh, give them a blessing of your love and your peace. And we pray that you will be with those who take uh, on the mantle of elder and deacon and that you allow for them to feel like you are faithful to them in a way that helps them to be faithful to this community. We pray for our country and the globe as COVID continues to wreak havoc on people's lives and on economies. We ask that there would be a quick transition into vaccines and that there would be a reduction of cases. And we pray that all Americans would use caution and follow guidelines and understand that it's not about us, but it's about caring for one another. Lord, we pray for peace in an age where it seems like brother and sister quarrel over things that uh, do not help us grow closer to you or to one another. We lift up our prayers through Christ who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And I would ask that... Uh, before we leave today, if you would like to give to the church, there's a basket back there to give. If you are online, please consider going to our website, winonapc.org, and click on the Give button. Um, your gifts continue to help the ministry of this church occur, and we need everybody, whether it's the folks that give money or time or prayers or calls or visits. All of those are ways that this church shows the love of Christ in the world. So let us give. And at this time, Floss is going to sing for us.
Brothers and sisters, let us go forth knowing that just as Mary had the child within her, we have the spirit within us. Let us be touched by that spirit to acts of kindness and generosity this season. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.